As we reflect on today's gospel, there's a couple of different aspects to it I'd like to bring out. So, Peter is trying to tell Jesus that he doesn't need to suffer. Well, Jesus turns around and calls him Satan for that. And he says, you're not thinking as God does, but as men do. So what's the difference between the way God thinks and the way men do? Well, men think they want as much pleasure and as little pain as possible. God may have a slightly different formula, unfortunately. So I think God expects us at least to carry a certain amount of pain that is necessary for our salvation in his plan for us. So there's a certain amount of sacrifice, um, humility, self-denial that's part of God's plan. So we see here that after the Lord makes it clear um, that the thought of him getting away from the cross is not the right deal because that's the only way that he's going to be able to redeem the world. Jesus is going to have to get on the cross and suffer. So we actually see a hint of what's coming in our... Oh, it's not there. Sorry. When we use the gospel, I, I lose my first reading. I can't refer to it. Okay. Um, so, so what we see is then a discourse on the cross in general. So we see Jesus saying that whoever wishes to come after me, in other words, we want to follow Jesus as his disciples, we want to follow him to heaven. He's letting us know that the bridge to heaven is the cross. It's from heaven to earth. And we've got to go and walk the way of the cross to get to heaven. So whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Then he says, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. And whoever loses life for my sake will find it. So, so what is this? It sounds kind of hard to follow. So let me see if I can break it down for you. So if we're going to deny ourselves, what are we going to deny ourselves and take up the cross? We're going to deny ourselves the pleasures of sin. We're going to deny ourselves the worldly, sensual life. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't enjoy some chocolate ice cream now and then and have fun and things like that. That's fine. There's plenty of moderate, sinless pleasures in life that we can enjoy and never go to confession. However, there's plenty of sins on the list that do involve having a certain type of lifestyle. And that's what Jesus is saying here. Whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. In other words, if we want to save the life of eternal paradise with Jesus in heaven, then we're going to have to lose the life of the things of this world to a certain extent. There's a contrast going on here. So let's, let's take a little look at what the Beatitudes say it's actually the, the Luke version, which is the Beatitudes and the Woes, in chapter 6. Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Now, I saw something that was really heartbreaking the other day. I watched on YouTube. It was a, it was a video on the Philippines, and I imagine the Philippines don't have a monopoly on this problem. But it was so sad to see beautiful little children, three, four, five, six, seven years old, boys and girls, they were going to the garbage dump to look for food. They weren't going to the grocery store. They didn't have enough money. Now, somebody somewhere has got enough money to take care of those kids. Somebody somewhere has got enough money and brains to arrange things so that they're not starving. Now, if you look at James here, he's talking about the faith and the works. Let's see what he says here in chapter 5. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending misery. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded. 
That corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. Boy, James is tough. He's letting them know what they got coming in the next world. Behold, um, he says, you have stored up treasure for the last days. He's being sarcastic. I can appreciate that. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying out, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. That's God. You have lived on the earth in a luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. <laughs> so <laughs> he's making a little analogy there that when their time comes for their judgment, they're in big trouble. You have condemned, you have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. So there's a double layer there because, you know, the, they murdered Jesus on the cross. And here Jesus is also connected then with the poor people that are exploited and hurt. So let's look here again. So we got, blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. In other words, God will reward them. Blessed are you who are hungry now, like those little children, for you will be satisfied. Then what does he say on the opposite? Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. In other words, what's coming for them is going to be a great reversal. Now this, this line, you have received your consolation. That to me is a scary line. Does anybody really want to have their consolation in this world for eternity? Like, the little bit of whatever they might be getting, the little bit of consolation here and now, to pay for it in eternity, that's a very frightening concept to me. I mean, if this is heaven, I don't want to see hell, okay? So, so we see scriptures talking about how there's certain people that are on the top and they're exploiting the people on the bottom and they're enjoying their riches and they don't care. Well, the reality is there is no escaping the cross. Either you deny yourself here and now in this world, you deny yourself the pleasures of sin, you deny yourself a certain amount of time for recreation and enjoyment and stop and pray. You honor God, the God who gave you life, the God who gave you his life on the cross, who died for you. And you are serving him in this world because he is the one who gives you life. And you deny yourself certain things in this world for the sake of God. And then he will reward you in the next world. People who deny themselves the cross and indulge in sin instead, they're not going to escape the cross. What's coming for them is a giant, scary, eternal cross in hell in the next world. Nobody wants to deal with that, I'll tell you that right now. Now, there's different ways we can deny ourselves. Jesus says, whoever comes after him must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. So, the cross that we carry is not made out of wood. It involves our will. It involves resisting temptation to sin and saying no. It involves giving up time that we could spend on ourselves and giving it to God in prayer every day. Take a break uh, and, and pray the rosary for 10 minutes or whatever. You know, give the Lord time in prayer and then he will give you a share in his eternal kingdom. But there's different levels of denial. So you can deny yourself financially by giving money to the church and to the poor to a certain extent, giving, giving alms, you know, tithing. There's that aspect. Then there's also giving up time to, to God in prayer. There's also giving up time and energy to love your neighbor. Now, I had an interesting introduction to that as a child. My father was a very smart and a smart man with some colorful New Yorker language that he would use on me. I was sitting on the couch watching Star Trek or Bugs Bunny or something like that, and uh, my mother was in the kitchen doing the dishes. And he came out and saw me there, and he let me have it. Now, I can't repeat what he said, <laughs> but I'll clean it up for you. <laughs> He said, your mother used to change your diapers. How dare you sit there watching TV while she's slaving away in the kitchen with your dirty dishes. You get up there and you go in there and you help your mother now. Well, 
<laughs> of course, he <laughs> shamed me into going and helping my mom because my mom was so wonderful. I love my mom. So I, of course, went in and helped her with the dishes. And I was also reminded that I am, for the rest of my life, the garbage man. <laughs> it was now my job that I was big enough that I needed to take out the garbage cans on Wednesday night. And my dad wasn't going to be doing it. It was my job. You're growing up now. You take care of the garbage forever. And it was also now, as I was getting bigger, my job to cut the grass forever until I move out of the house. So, you know, guys may not realize it, but we are, we are now the garbage men of the world. You know, it's not the kind of job you put on the women. <laughs> so, so, in any event, reaching out, helping out at the house, helping mom, helping your wife, helping whoever, you know, giving of your time, your hands, your energy, in charitable assistance. That's another way we can deny ourselves. How else can we deny ourselves? Well, Jesus is a powerful example of humility and forgiveness, really the perfect example. So what is Jesus doing on the cross? Dying for our sins. And what does he say from the cross? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus forgives the people that are murdering him and torturing him and mocking him before they even ask for forgiveness. Such powerful love, such powerful humility and forgiveness do we have here. Super humility, super forgiveness in the Lord, our Savior. So we in turn are called to do the same thing. One of the works of mercy is to forgive all injuries. It's even the work of mercy is built into the Lord's Prayer. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So, so we need to have humility to ask God to forgive us. We need to admit we have sinned against him and done wrong, and we tell God, I'm sorry, Lord, please forgive me. Then we pass it on to our neighbor, and we forgive those who have sinned against us. And we also, in turn, if we've done something wrong against someone, we ask for forgiveness. We humble ourselves. I'm sorry, my friend. I didn't mean to do that to you. I'm sorry if I hurt you. Those words that I said may have hurt you, you know. And so these are the ways that we are called to deny ourselves. We deny ourselves our pride. And we instead uh, indulge, as it were, in humility and forgiveness as far as God goes and our neighbor goes. We push that pride away. So the world, on the other hand, doesn't push humility and forgiveness. It pushes pride and vengeance. Hollywood cranks out movies all the time, all about pride and vengeance and destruction. They make a lot of money on it. But that's not what Jesus teaches us. We are called to deny our pride, deny our vengeance, we are called instead to indulge our humility and indulge forgiveness. That's why he says, whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. So if we want to live forever, then we got to lose the life of sin, the life of selfishness, the life of exploiting and hurting my neighbor and indulging myself at the expense of my neighbor. Again, we saw that in... Uh, uh, chapter 5 of James, you know, woe to you rich, you're fattening yourself for the day of slaughter. <laughs> well, language. So, like I said, I don't know who's, who's got the money in these countries, you know, where these poor people, the, the thought of having little kids, cute little kids going to the garbage dump to get their dinner for the day. Somebody's responsible and somebody will answer for it in the next world if they don't straighten out here and now. We don't want to be on that list. We don't want to be on the list of bad guys that winds up having to pay for the wrong things that we did in the next world. We want to straighten it out here and now. We want to deny ourselves sinfulness, selfishness, and instead we need to be selfless and generous with our neighbor kind to our neighbor, forgiving, and, and asking for forgiveness when we've done wrong. 
That's the way of the cross, the full version. That's what we're called to do. So resisting temptation to sins against the Ten Commandments and also living out the works of mercy according to our state in life, leading a life of prayer, taking time out of the life that God gave us. Every minute that you have all day long, where did that come from? Did you get it for yourself? God gave it to you. And he got so much. So, let's remember we are servants of God. We are called to be servants of our neighbor. We are called to be humble. We are called to deny ourselves. That's the path of life. That's the path to heaven. That's the path to paradise.